and ashok are very uh, uh, they are doing a great job in in uh, helping us with this book launch so this is our book which is going to be launched today which is on pediatric orthopedic trauma protocols and techniques this is co-authored by dr binodhi shet dr sandeep vaidya and myself uh we are we were very lucky to get four words from two absolute stalwarts one of them professor dr uh, dr uh, ns lord who is our mentor or a teacher our our uh, guide to so many of our our uh, our as orthopedic surgeons and we have dr sandeep patwardhan who is who is also with us today and uh, uh, who is a professor of orthopedics at the sancheti hospital and who is our teacher in pediatric orthopedics and they have written great four words for for our book just to give a brief outline of the the entire textbook it is overall uh, divided in four sections one is the first section is on general features of pediatric orthopedic trauma which starts off with special features about physical injuries one thing which is extremely important for all general orthopedic surgeons and for all training we have a very good section on casts and splints how to apply casts how to apply various splints how to remove casts that is a very important thing compartment syndrome and pathological fractures are some things which are very important for for management of pediatric orthopedic trauma and another section on care of the child with multiple injuries the second section is in detail management of upper limb fractures so which will start from clavicle right to the hand and carpus the third section in us is on lower limb fractures right from the acetabular fractures to the dislocations of the foot and fractures of the foot and the last section is on cervical spine injuries it is now available on on amazon you can order it directly from from amazon and to start of this we are going to have the first author dr binodhi shet who is our teacher who is professor and head of uh, head of the unit at the lt mgh hospital she is an extensively fellowship trained pediatric orthopedic surgeon she has won the japanese sicot fellowship and the ao fellowship she is going to talk talk to us about how how this book came about and what was the genesis of this book over to you dr binodhi thank you mandar and uh, as all of us know that uh, every childhood fracture is unique the correct treatment of any childhood fracture depends upon first of all the correct diagnosis and then a proper protocol and technique to treat that fracture once you have diagnosed it well so if you see in children the diagnosis can sometimes be very tricky if there is a trans transfacial separation which is in a very small child where the distal humerus is not yet ossified it looks almost like an elbow dislocation and you have to be really careful and see where the displacement has occurred what is the alignment of the radio capitular and ulna humeral line in order to diagnose this fracture coming to a next one like a type 1 delbit fracture which is a transfacial fracture of the proximal femur and there if you just see ap x ray it looks very benign you can easily miss the diagnosis it's only when you take the lateral x ray there you can see the displacement of the epiphysis and then diagnose this fracture correctly and then treat it with a transfacial wire sometimes even ap and lateral x rays are not sufficient in themselves and you require special internal oblique view for example in this lateral condyle humerus fracture where you can see the fracture line correctly and then in addition you need sometimes arthrogram or other investigation in order to know the type of lateral condyle fracture and then treat them accordingly remember unlike in adults every childhood higher investigation will require some anesthesia or sedation so it's not easy to order a ct scan or mri for any every child fracture so that is why it is very important to understand and diagnose the childhood fracture well and sometimes in this adolescent fractures which are literally transition between a child and an adult you require such higher investigation like ct scan to diagnose such typical telogen and then treat them accordingly so once you have diagnosed the treatment also is tricky sometimes in children fracture you can treat them conservatively like this neonate humerus fracture of the shaft of humerus 
where it looks so grossly displaced, angulated. But what you require is just a simple sling or a stockinet and see how beautifully the fracture not only unites, but remodels perfectly like a normal, nothing has happened over a period of six to nine months. As against that, in some cases, coming to next slide, uh, in some cases, especially if you have adolescent fractures, which again, I said, this transition between a child and an adult, like this distal uh, ankle fracture, distal tibia fracture, where it appears like Salter Harris 3 in AP view and Salter Harris type 2 in lateral view. But this will require a CT evaluation and correctly diagnose the fracture, which is actually a Salter Harris type 4. So such cases, you have to diagnose them well and then just treat them with perfect anatomical reduction and stable fixation. So we have two spectrum. At one spectrum, you can treat them conservatively very well. At the other spectrum, you have to treat them just like an adult. And surprisingly, in some cases, like femur sharp fracture, same fracture is treated differently in different children. If a sharp femur fractures occur, occurs in a neonate, you can treat them beautifully just with pavlic harness. As against that, if it's a preschool child who is length unstable, if there is significant shortening at the outset, you initially require traction and then convert them into spica and some length stable fractures you can give spica on day one. If it's the same fracture is in a school going child that is say five to 11 years, you cannot treat them in spica. The ideal treatment would be to do a elastic stable intramedullary nailing. But again, if the same child, if the child is heavyweight or if the fracture is in proximal or distal third or the fracture pattern is like oblique or long uh, spiral, then you have to do hybrid fixation that is tense along with external fixator. Or sometimes you treat them like in adolescent you have to treat femur shaft fractures with trochanteric entry nail or submuscular plate. So a same fracture, again, treatment is different for different uh, age, type of fracture, the weight of the child, the associated injuries. So as I said, in children fractures, the principles are different than what you follow in adults. And if you don't follow them, then what do we get? Like all of us are associated with tertiary referral centers. And I'm sure that Mandar and Sandeep, you will agree that time and again, we get such patients who have been treated, mistreated, either the diagnosis is missed initially or they are not treated in the right way. Like this child with a simple type 1 Bedo Montagia fracture with ulna fracture and radial head anterior dislocation. The surgeon just thought it's a child fracture, everything unites well, little angulation will unite and then he just did a cast in C2 and then the child landed up with a malunited Montagia. And then subsequently, three or four surgeries were done, again, not following the protocol, not following the principles. And ultimately, the child landed up with still persistent radial head dislocation with almost atrophic ulna and heading towards almost like one bone forearm. So when we see this and we all discuss about this time and again, we realize that what is lacking in pediatric orthopedics is the right treatment in acute trauma. And if we do that correctly, probably we can uh, save the child and avoid such mal malfunctions and malunions and functional dis uh, uh, derangements. So we thought that let us do something where we can offer every child has a right, next slide, every child has a right to get the right treatment at the outset. So towards this goal, I think we have all been working over the last seven, eight years and Sandeep and his colleagues have been doing this IFIX uh, conference that is fractures in children. But there is a limitation in a conference where you can reach out only to few people and the topics covered will be limited. So we thought why not write down everything where we can discuss the protocols, the diagnostic met methods and the potential complications and the right way to treat the child in a compiled manner which can reach uh, has, has a wider reach where we can cover most of the topics. The uh, person who is reading will have uh, a provision to go back again and again, to revise again and again whenever he gets such a case. And for easy understanding, let us all uh, club all our x-rays, supplement with line diagrams, various clinical pictures, so that it is very easy to understand. And everybody who is reading it, meet a resident or the general orthopedic surgeon can apply these principles when they get such cases. And that is why we uh, added most of the chapters are associated with flowcharts where when you get a patient, we can go to the flowchart and then 
the, decide about the right treatment. So with this thought in mind, we, we just took a small step towards, you know, getting, uh, giving every child the right treatment at the outset. And uh, Mandar and Sandeep and we all three of us worked hard on that. And I think Sandeep Mandar will tell, tell you how we tried to implement our idea into actual execution. Over to you, Mandar. You're muted, Mandar. Thank you, madam. Uh, so as, uh, as madam has very nicely explained about why we decided to, uh, to start writing this book. So when we have the why, we should know how and what exactly did we do in, in this book. So what we wanted to do is have a very uh, succinct type of book, which doesn't go too overboard with too much of literature review but it's mainly a very clinical type of book. So if you see this chapter, this is a chapter on supracondylar humerus fracture, one of the most important fractures of uh, childhood. Every chapter flows through a very simple way. There's a small introduction. There's a very small section on the relevant anatomy. It's not overboard. It's just a small relevant anatomical section. Just a few mechanism of in injuries and a brief classification. Now what we have done in many of the classifications is we have to, we have tried not just to show schematics, but we have tried to show all the X-rays of that particular type, right from a flexion supracondylar to all three grades of supracondylar, all four grades to be precise, and also the new bar classification. We have tried to uh, give particular X-rays and clinical example, examples of every type of classification of most of the fractures. Our operative technique is quite extensive and we have tried to uh, explain all the steps of what we feel is a, a, a easy and simple management of every fracture. Every chapter has these sort of diagrams. There is a picture schematic diagram of a child and where the surgeon should be, where the assistant should be, where what, where, what is the way in which the C-arm should be arranged, where is the anesthetist, where is the screen. So everything, every chapter and every surgery in the chapter has this, these sort of images in it. Along with that, there are some very nice diagrams which have been drawn by our artist, Ms. Sai, uh, about all the various steps of particular reductions and fixations of the fracture. So you will find all these things which are also illustrated with these diagrams. Along with that, we have written all the points about how to reduce, how to fix, what are the various ways and means of fixation. Along with that, as I said, we have tried to do uh, show fixations about various types of fractures actually in clinical cases. So you can see various types of the Bach classification, as you know about the high supracondylar, the lateral oblique, the medial oblique. Everywhere we have tried to show X-rays which illustrate what we try to show. Or try to write. So that will make it ex extremely self-explanatory to the child, to the, to the cl treating clinician. And finally, we have a flow chart for, for every fracture about how to manage. So if you have a child who comes to, comes to your clinic, this flow chart is ready, type 1, 2, 3, 4, and we know exactly how to manage it. Dr. Sandeep is going to talk to you in detail about, uh, about the flow charts. Another, another uh, chapter is on a slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Now, this condition is usually not talked to in much in pediatric trauma, but now we have included it because it's quite common nowadays. Again, everything flows in the same manner. Small introduction, small relevant anatomy, classification. We have tried to show all the types of slips in, in schematic diagrams as well as on x-rays. And we have these all important pictures. So if you, if I say I have, I'm showing the safe surgical dislocation, you can see that every step is illustrated with these nice self-explanatory diagrams. You can see that the steps of the trochanteric osteotomy are very well illustrated, including all the steps. And this is also accompanied by clinical photos as well as x-rays. So this is how most of the chapters go through. So our main aim of doing this, this book was to help in 
uh, orthopedic residents as well as general orthopedic surgeons who are treating a lot of pediatric orthopedic trauma to just have a ready reckoner. So if you have a case of say supracondyl humerus fractures or a lateral condyle humerus fracture, this is the book you can just go through them. You can know the classification. So this is this type of fracture. Uh, we should get an internal rotation oblique X-ray for a lateral condyle. And this is the way to fix it according to the song, songs classification. So that is our that was our aim of doing this uh, book, and that was that that is how every chapter flows through, so that it becomes a very easy thing to understand for every clinician who treats pediatric orthopedic trauma. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Sandeep Vaidya, who is a consultant pediatric orthopedic surgeon from at Jupiter Hospital Thane and Pinnacle Hospital. And he's also an assistant honorary consultant and BJ Wadi Hospital. Tell us something more about the various flow charts which we have in our in our uh, book. Over to you, Sandeep. Yeah, thanks, Mandar. So Mandar has spoken uh, about the text part of this book. What I will do is I will focus on another extremely important feature, and I believe a unique feature of this book, and that is the flow charts. So. Uh, Why did we think about the flowcharts, first of all? So uh, when we conceptualize this book, uh, this book was designed to satisfy the needs of the PG student, number one. But also importantly, we felt that the general orthopedic practicing surgeon should have a kind of a ready reckoner book, which uh, he can refer to in uh, when faced with certain clinical situations. Now, uh, typically, uh, uh, what happens is a general orthopedic surgeon is very busy in his clinical practice. And when confronted with a clinical situation, he has to make a quick clinical decision. And if he has to counter check his clinical decision against established literature, uh, he may not have the time to go through the entire book. And therefore what we thought is that the, at the end of the, uh, each chapter, we should put out a flow chart or an algorithm which will summarize the decision-making process for that particular fracture, which has been discussed in that chapter. For example, this is the flow chart, which describes the decision-making process in fracture radius ulna. So how do the flow charts, which have been published in this book, how do they help an orthopedic surgeon to make his decision? So I will discuss it with the help of two case examples. And this is the classical case example. Okay, this is a supracondylar grade three. And you can see a large ecchymosis. And additionally, this is a pink and pulseless hand. Now, typically these supracondylar fractures, they always come to you in the evening because that is the time the kids go out to play and that is the time they injure themselves. And since it is a widely displaced fracture and it's pulseless hand, it means you have to take him up right away the same, the very same night. However, you are busy in, a, uh, in your OPD and you don't have time to really, you know, go back and refer to books as to what should be exactly your decision-making process in this, uh, in this case. Now, thanks to, uh, you know, various conferences like IFIX and the voluminous literature available, the concepts are pretty clear, but still before going in to treat this case, you would like to cross-check against some reference. And here is where the flowchart comes into uh, uh, the picture. And what you need to do is you have to place your flowchart and see where it fits into the, in which arm of the flowchart does your particular case fit. And that will give you a rough idea as to how you are going to treat this fracture. So this particular fracture, this was, a, as I said, it was a pink pulseless hand and close reduction was not possible. So uh, what we decided is we decided to go in for open reduction. And in the, indeed we found that there was some neurovascular impair, uh, uh, impalement in the fracture fragments. So this fracture did need an open reduction and K-wire fixation. Another example. So this is a nine-year-old child and a fracture femur. Now in a nine-year-old child, you would uh, impulsively think that, you know, 10 snail is the procedure of choice and it is the panacea for all fractures. But wait, is this fracture a routine fracture? Obviously it is not. It is a fracture, it is in the proximal third, plus there is a large butterfly fragment. So here again, Let's look at what the algorithm says. And the algorithm says that when you are faced with such a fracture, which is in the proximal or distal third, plus one which is comminuted, simple tense nail may not suffice. You may need more rigid fixation in the form of submuscular plating, or your tense may need to be augmented with a cast or an external fixator. 
right? So these are the uh, you know flowcharts. These flowcharts have been given at the end of each chapter, and I feel that this would be extremely useful to the practicing orthopedic surgeon as well as the PG student. And I encourage uh, everyone who is reading this book to go through this flowchart before treating each case in the operating theater. So that's all from my end. Back to you, Bandar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandeep. So uh, as, as we are coming to the end of just the description of uh, uh, what this book entails, I would like to invite our guest of honor, Dr. Sandeep Patwardhan, Professor of Orthopedics at the Sancheti Hospital, and was kind enough to read the book and uh, write the preface, uh, uh, write the foreword for this book. Uh, over to you, Dr. Sandeep Patwardhan, sir. Hi, thank you, Mandar. Thank you for the kind introduction. So, <clears throat> at the outset, let me first congratulate all three authors for bringing out this wonderful uh, handbook, I would call it. I won't call it a textbook because like the Koval's handbook of orthopedics, it's a must for everybody who carries it into his casualty or in his operation room as a handbook because uh, it has succinct, it is precise, and it actually puts together the experience of a practicing surgeon and a person from the public institutes like Lokmanya Tilak Municipal Medical College. The volume of work there, the experience and the enthusiasm of these three young colleagues of mine shines through every page of this book. So it's not only simple and easy to read, but it offers you practical situational tips. I've always believed that we need to practice situational orthopedics because every time we need a textbook which comes from the Western world, we are inundated with a large amount of information and some ultra high techniques using a lot of sophisticated equipment for a population base which probably has different needs and requirements. Whereas this handbook will cater to a practicing orthopedic surgeon in the rural parts of our country, including say Bihar or Uttar Pradesh or somewhere where there is a medical college, but there is no professor or there is no real senior who will come to his help at night. If they can just open up this book and follow the algorithms as Sandeep Vaidya has so nicely shown us how to use the algorithms and the protocols, I am sure they will not face much of a problem. So overall, it will definitely help in even the young practicing postgraduate or a practicing orthopedic surgeon in the interiors. And in addition, the young pedipod who is starting off his practice so that they don't get lost in the practicing uh, uh, in the area of private practice. Because what happened was when we learned our pediatric orthopedics in 20 years ago, children's fractures were treated with quite a lot of disdain. And uh, the concept was that bacha hai, plaster laga do, theek ho jayega. Okay, from there, we have learned that every pediatric fracture in a different age group can behave totally differently. And the outcomes are very highly uh, subjective to what kind of initial treatment is offered. Too much of aggression is also not good and too much of uh, ignorance is also not good because they try to treat uh, patients, children's fractures like adults with a lot of open reductions and heavy plating also, which also is not such a good thing. So I think it was important that we have an Indian book and Indian uh, literature with the experience of practicing Indian surgeons who can highlight the differences in children's and adult fractures and give practical solutions for uh, the practicing orthopedic surgeon as to how to tackle these situations. So this book definitely is going to be part of our library and part of the list of books that we recommend to every new batch of postgraduates that comes in. But I think as part of IFIX Foundation, we will promote this book as, as our official publication and help you with subsequent edi editions to refine it and come up with a better quality production also, because I think this is a very important uh, 
landmark uh, book which will fill a large void into a specialized pediatric fracture management uh, sort of a handbook uh, which is not available at all in indian literature so congratulations once again highly recommended i guess everybody should go ahead and buy it it's reasonably priced it's well illustrated cleanly printed and the clarity of thought shines through each page and finally thank you mandar vinoti and sandeep for honoring me and inviting me as chief guest and also to write the preface i am touched at this gesture thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, so i would like to thank uh, ortho tv for giving us this opportunity for this uh, book launch uh, as you know this is available on amazon or you i'll uh, also uh, send to neeraj the the phone number of of the publisher if there is any issue with getting a delivery through amazon you can contact directly contact contact mr balani who who is uh, our our publisher and he can get it courier to to anyone who needs it uh, andar i think just a suggestion here is that in south east asia a lot of people have a problem with foreign the bangladesh sri lanka these areas are not able to get amazon delivery so right sir try to speak to your publisher to make it available through some agency abroad because i think okay. this it will help a lot of people even in africa definitely sir yeah yeah all right sir thank you so much thank uh, you ortho tv team uh, jagan uh, are you there thanks to sandeep patwardhan for encouraging us so well <laughs> i think uh, you guys took the initiative and seized it is so heartwarming because this uh, it's 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 the conceptual creativity and innovation by putting it into practice there is a lot of gap in that okay so we could visualize and conceptualize but we were simply too lazy to put our efforts into writing it so thank you all three of you to put it together and get the ball rolling and like i said now that it is there there will be a second edition and a third edition and we will work at refining it into a more and more better way so that it becomes more and more uh, accessible and popular maybe we can have uh, a cd with links so that like we have those uh, expertise you you have this Uh, american books which have a link and a cd where you can go and see the video yeah so we should try to incorporate uh, in the next edition uh, video links through the book also and an, and and a supplementary cd with it with techniques or something like that so right now we have focused great. on acute trauma maybe we can have neglected and missed and the malunions yeah. and the extension yeah. of this. yeah but even even this will eventually need uh, refining at the second edition third edition in 2 3 years time so like we had those master techniques by tolo vincent tolo which used to have a cd so that can also help so because we have digital media nowadays the print book is always nice to have but we can always uh, make a, a video book also with that something like that thought for the future let's see like the print extension of ifix actually you know the idea yeah, yeah that's what i said this this can be the official textbook which can go to every delegate whenever we start uh, live conferences offline whenever they start because it's it's always essential to have a new updated version then every year or maybe in 2 3 years so it's nice very good thank you so much sir चलो गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू टू द ऑर्थो टीवी टीम वी हैव डॉक्टर अशोक हियर